New York, but I live in Portland now and I go to Reed College. And my mother was an addict and has been incarcerated. From what I understand is she became a prostitute because of her addiction and that is how she was incarcerated so many times, I believe especially in New York City when she came up here with my father. So how many years was it between the time that you were taken or that you left your mother and that you reconnected with her? Um, I was adopted for a year, me and my brother, from a separate family and then my father was able to get us back. And then once my mother was out of rehab, I don't know if that was before or after, people are always vague with me. Um, she, we, got to, we saw her almost every other weekend and yeah, we've been connected ever since. So when was the first time that you understood what your mother's real history was like? How old were you? It was a very gradual process. Um, I am one of the only people in my family who has long talks with my grandma on my father's side. And she, out of that, I was able to gather like a few pieces of information. Like when she would, she would call my mother a prostitute. And I thought maybe she was just exaggerating because she's very, you know, old school Turkish. And, um, and then afterwards, um, one day my mother sat me and my brother down. I was about 12, so my brother was about 14. And um, she told us the whole story. She told us we had other brothers and um, that she had given up for adoption. And she told us basically about her life before so that we could understand better. What did she tell you when, when she explained it to you? I don't think she actually talked about prostitution, but she did talk about, she said she was addicted um, to drugs before and um, that she had to give up our other two brothers because they had no money to support them. That was it? Um, that was about it. She said that she met my father in Miami and they came up here. They were both pretty crazy. And you're, so you were 12 years old Yes. and your mother kind of broke this news to you, and, and so what was your reaction? Um, I was actually depressed for a few days. Just afterwards, I didn't realize how hard it had hit me, because I had kind of expected it. I just heard from family members, like, tidbits, like, oh, your mother's crazy, and, um, and she's, she's insane, basically. That's what they say a lot, because they don't want to tell us specifics in my father's side of the family. <laughs> but then when we found out, um, it... The most that affected me actually made me feel closer to my mother because I felt like I knew her a lot more now and she wasn't this mysterious thing I saw every other weekend. And that was about as much as you saw her when you were growing up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in, subsequent to that time, has she told you more about what her experience has been? Uh, she has. One day um, she invited me to one of her lectures at John Jay College and um, what she does there is she, she first gives them some facts about incarceration and um, addiction and then she goes into her own life story and she went into a lot of detail there that I was not um, privy to before yeah so I was like fine to get out and like in his lecture hall and uh, yeah that's where I found out a lot of her backstory um, she told me she told them all about like how um about how she got into drugs how she became addicted about how she felt when she was younger she felt her mother was abusive and she felt alone and then she talked about my father and when they came up here and she talked about my brother and me and I didn't know some of those stories about myself even. I'm technically a crack baby. Yeah. Here you are at Reed College doing quite well going to medical school. Um, does that anger you that there's that stereotype out there or that people kind of think those things? It does. I was actually interviewed on NPR about the crack baby epidemic in the 90s and um, how they um, have grown up today to be successful people. There are always some who have really been damaged, but um, according to NPR, at least the majority are fine, like me. <laughs> so, what, um, what other stereotypes did you, um, did you have to deal with in dealing with your mother? I mean, did you have people tease you? Um, did you have to fight through kind of your own like idea of like, oh, what's a crack user or what's a prostitute or any yeah. of these things like that? Um, it, nobody really teased me because um, the people I told that I was a crack baby um, were my friends and they kind of joked about it sometimes, like no wonder. <laughs> but um, my, my own feelings were like, my mother doesn't seem like, you know, the typical, you know, I think a crackhead, you think of a black guy in 
in Harlem, <laughs> smoking crack behind like a cave or something, <laughs> some, for some reason in, in Harlem. <laughs> but my mother is, she's a sweet woman. Um, she's loud, but, but she's nice. And I, I just had to deal with that anyone, anyone can go through that. And I learned that early and I'm, I'm glad I learned that because I feel it really helps me connect with people see what, what it could be like. It prevents me from going down that road and it, um, yeah, it prevents me from going down that road. How, um, how do you feel like this um, affected your childhood as far as like, you know, how you saw yourself or your place in the world and as you were trying to find yourself, you know, as a young woman? I mean, mm -hmm. talk about some of the, the difficulties. That... I always felt kind of different because of it. And like all my friends had maybe normal families and the, in, maybe not always a mom and a dad, but at least a mother who was there. And first of all, I didn't have my mother because of the past, she wasn't allowed to be with me. And um, just feeling like I was, I'm a prostitute's child and I'm a crack baby. And I don't think of myself in those terms, but when it was introduced to me, I certainly had to think through it. Like I'm a crack baby, does it mean, is that why I'm so weird? <laughs> Like, I'm not that weird, but, you know, everyone, especially when you're 12, you think you're weird and different and special. And so I had to just kind of dig through that. Am I really me? Is, is it because of the crack? Or is it me? And I've come to the conclusion that I'm me and I'm fine. <laughs> um, how did it or did it affect your relationships as you were growing up? I mean, you're like, 18 now, you're just starting to head into adulthood. But as your high school can be a really vicious place. Mm -hmm. and you were in New York, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how was, the, how was that experience? Did people know about your background? Uh, yeah, some people did. Yeah. Um, my friends, mostly. Were they cool about it? They were. And um, they also, the teasing continued a little bit, like, yeah, you're, that's why. <laughs> but um, yeah, it didn't really affect me that much, except that I had interesting stories to tell. <laughs> when people were like, oh, I hate my mom. She wants me to do my homework. And I'm like, oh, yeah, but my mom was a crackhead. <laughs> it's always fun to bring up. <laughs>